This is the second tarot reading that I will be doing for Micah Miller. And in the first reading, we really connected into the relationship between Micah Miller and her husband, J.P. Miller, who's the pastor at Solid Rock Church. So if you haven't yet watched that one, you might want to go back and look at that. But in the first reading, we learned a lot about the relationship between Micah and her husband, J.P. And within that reading, we learned that there was a lot of bad intention going on on J.P.'s part throughout their relationship. There was a lot of gaslighting, false flag, and basically... He just gave off this very um, con man energy during that first reading. So I'm going to connect with the energy once again of with Micah Miller so that we can actually get to the bottom of this and find out, did Micah Miller really do this to herself? So of course, as usual, I am going to light this candle in honor of Micah Miller. And so as long as this candle remains lit, I will be a channel for her energy to come through so that she can tell her story through me using the tarot and oracle cards. All right. I ask that the highest vibrations of light and love connect to my highest self and release all previous programming and unwanted energies. And I want to be a clear channel for the energy of Micah Miller to come through. So Micah Miller, while this candle is lit, I will be your channel to connect with your energy to find out, did you really do this to yourself? All right, so in this reading, I'm going to go ahead and start once again with these cards. And this time we're going to look directly at um, the death of Micah Miller and how this happened. All right, Micah. So tell us, did you do this to yourself? We just got dating history once again, which we actually received in the first reading, okay? This card says dating history or killer new of victim. I find that confirmation for a lot of what was said in the first reading. All right, let's get another card. I'm going to shuffle three times again, cut the deck, and draw another card. friend knows something. So it's possible that there is another person involved as well um, who knows something more about the actual passing of Micah Miller. Because in this reading, we are not just asking about the relationship, but we're asking if Micah actually did this to herself. All right, we're going to get one more of these cards. A closer observation of the victim's living space may provide clues. So it sounds like the authorities should be looking at their home, Micah and JP's home, or um, honestly, I'm not real sure if she even lived with him in the end. 
Um, but definitely take a look at the home life because a closer observation of this victim's living space will provide clues. All right. Okay, so that's what we're starting on for this reading. I also want to mention before I go any further that in the first reading, um, I didn't really know too much about what happened to Micah. Um, but I mentioned that she was found in her car, but that's not true. She was actually found near the water and near her car, but not like in her car, like I thought. So I just wanted to clear that up. All right, Micah. We want to know, did you do this to yourself? Did you do this to yourself? Okay, so oh, these are all mixed up. So we got the nuclear and secret weapon. The secret weapon is, this card always reminds me of, like, um, online, like, not online necessarily, but you can see that the image has all these cords going from one to the other. So, in some way, there was a secret weapon being used that had something to do with electronics or something to do with computers, right? And with this nuclear card, the energy I'm picking up on is there was definitely, like, a war going on within this within her life. And that war, I mean, what I'm feeling is literally between her and her husband, JP, right? I'm gonna grab a different deck here. Oh my gosh. We got this in the, this one literally just fell out of the deck and onto the ground. And we got this in the first reading. And in the first reading, I was really connecting with the energy of JP and Micah's relationship. And um, I think the energy I picked up on in that first reading was also correct where Micah, or I mean, JP was kind of like, selling Micah short when it comes to the congregation and the church and all that. But now that we've received this again during this second reading, specifically asking if she did this to herself, I'm going to have to say this is definitely confirmation that someone was contracted to do something to Micah here. I just dropped way too many. All right, hold on. Let's go to the, to the third pile here. All right, Micah. Well, a bunch fell out. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, five is perfect. So... We got devil. I don't like to take more than five. That's why I say five is perfect. So what just came out was devil, bloodline, abuse, slash neglect, treason, and perversion. All right. So clearly, this devilish energy was definitely taking place here. And with the bloodline and abuse neglect, clearly there was abuse of some kind, whether it was mental, emotional, physical, or all types of abuse, including spiritual abuse taking place in this relationship. Because spiritual abuse as well, because JP is pretending that he's this pastor, right? Who's so connected with spirit. And then treason and perversion. 
So I definitely feel like within the family, there was something going on. The family being JP and Micah and their um, union. Um, I'm also getting that it's possible that JP, JP has had some of this going on within his bloodline all along. I don't know if like his parents also ran a church and like almost like taught him how to be, you know? Yeah. We got J.E. and love. Hmm. And that came with market manipulation. So what I see right away is um, next to what we already got here is that there was a major manipulation taking place in his love life. And with the J.E. there, I always see that as like a desire for younger people. Because, um, you know, with what comes out about, you know, little St. James Island and what takes place there and all of that. So definitely a manipulation in the love life. And I think that definitely um, because there's this desire for someone who's younger. All right. I'm going to shuffle these together again, and then we'll ask some more questions. All right. Here we go. All right. All right, Micah. Can you tell us more about what really happened to you? Did you do this to yourself? Did you take your own life, Micah? We got wooded area. Oh, I spilled a bunch again. Wooded area. What about the wooded area? Let me try this again. <sighs> okay, so we got wooded area and then accident with um, spouse partner came out. Okay. Oops, got two of them here. All right, yeah, Micah was on the road to freedom definitely in this relationship because as I pointed out in the first reading, she just served JP with divorce papers recently right before her death. So she was definitely on the road to freedom at the time of this, um, occur this event taking place. All right, let's get this one. What else can you tell us, Micah, about what really happened to you? Okay, so something's being exposed. And I think um, that is true. Micah Miller's own family and friends do not believe that she did this to herself. They definitely believe it had something to do with her spouse. All right. 
Something's being exposed. And it could just be exposed that she was on the road to freedom, right? Because she gave him the um, divorce papers. We also got DNA here. I don't know if that fell out on an accident because I wasn't really shuffling when that one came out. Let's see. Oh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Too many. Too many. Let's try that again. All right, Micah. What can you tell us about what really happened? Someone just rang my doorbell, so I'm going to pause this. Wait, before I go answer the door, I just want to say, right when someone rang the doorbell, which is a bell, which is confirmation, we got death, humanoid, serial killer. Let me go answer the door. I do apologize for the distraction. All right, Micah. All right. In the first reading, we got this humanoid card as well. So this is the second time that Micah has brought this one to our attention. And someone in the comments um, said something that made sense to me. Someone in the comments of the first video said it's possible that the humanoid card came out because someone was manipulating her voice using like AI to make it sound as though she was calling that 911 call in about um, doing this to herself, right? And I found that to be a major possibility. Now, that doesn't negate whatever was said in the first reading about it as well. Because in the first reading, I was connecting with the energy of their relationship. And I think I said something along the lines of JP is almost like a programmed robot, right? And just saying what needs to be said for the sake of it. Um, which still stands true. Two things can be true at once. But I do believe that this humanoid card might mean that someone was manipulating the people um, into thinking that was her. And then we also got these two cards with that humanoid card. Okay. So I find that interesting because we also had this card in both readings, right? And what happens when you are, are hiring someone to do this kind of work. It's really that you're hiring this kind of person, right? Usually someone who, who will do this for money is someone who has done it before. All right. All right, my God. Do you want to tell us anything else? Out. Okay, that was too many. Sorry. We'll give this deck one more try. Otherwise, we'll move on to the next deck. Hmm. We got rumors and accomplice, partner in crime. I definitely feel like there are a lot of rumors going around regarding Micah's death. Um that someone else could have done it, right? Because if she did this to herself, there would be no accomplice. There would be no partner in this crime. Um, so what about the rumors? What about the partner in crime? Oh gosh, oh gosh, it's all falling out. Okay, okay. There's too many again. Try this again, Micah. Communication. So there's definitely going to be some kind of communication possibly revealing this accomplice slash partner in crime involved in the passing of Micah Miller. And then we have predictive programming. This is exactly what uh, JP was doing to his congregation. He was telling all their family, all their friends, and the entire church congregation that Micah was mentally ill. He was doing a predictive programming campaign against his own wife. He was setting up, um, I think he was using his own communication, rumors, he, he was the accomplice here for this. Um, he was using 
his own communication to set up this predictive programming, knowing that, you know, once this finally took place, once the deed was done, that people would already be primed and gassed up. They are ready. You know, they're primed and gassed up to believe that she did this to herself. I'm at the point now where I do not believe that Micah Miller did this to herself, no matter what the 911 phone call says. Oh my gosh. We got MK Ultra and Antichrist, you guys. So we all know that JP was definitely controlling Micah Miller, um, offering a lot of mind control ever since she was a young teen. Um, and while he's a pastor, he definitely has the energy of the devil, the evil Antichrist. He is of the lower vibration. In fact, I'm going to go as far as to say that he's MK ultra ing his entire congregation in a very evil way. All right. Is there any final message you want to give us, Micah Miller? I am totally convinced that Micah is telling us she did not do this to herself. So is there anything else you want to say, Micah Miller, about what happened to you? Hold on. I'm losing my grips. Is there any final messages, Micah Miller? Alive. We got alive. And then what? So while she's still alive... Ghoul and ancient mystery. Okay, so I know that they were trying to build schools in Africa or something like that. But we also got ancient mystery along with that. So when Micah was still alive, there was definitely um, a school involved, you know, with her mission trips and stuff like that. What about this ancient mystery? Dating. I'm putting that back on the bottom of the deck. Hidden. So we have Ancient Mystery and the Hidden card. So there's definitely some kind of secrets here involving that school that was taking place uh, while Micah was still alive. Ooh, that was too many. All right. Any final message about that? Yeah. Yeah. The hidden thing is greed. It's about money. There's going to be hidden money regarding these schools that she was trying to do while she was alive. All right, Micah. We got regret again. In the first reading, we got the regret card with, um, oh, shoot. What is this? Run away. But in the first reading, we got regret with, I think it was mind control. She regretted the way that she let him control her. Now she regrets the way she ran away. Project Blue Beam. This is a false... Um, She regrets not running away sooner. I feel like God had been telling her to get out of this for a long time. All right. I think that's about it. We have definitely something going on. We've received this card in the first reading and in this reading that it has to do with dating history, right? The killer knew of the victim. Through a dating history. We got that a friend knows something, right? Which makes sense because we also got accomplice, partner in crime. We got murder for hire. So there's someone out there that knows something. And a closer observation of Micah's living space would provide more clues. So obviously this is pointing at her living situation with her husband. We got nuclear secret weapon and murder for hire. Um, this was definitely a war going on in this relationship. And the secret weapon is some kind of 
communication that was taking place, probably like online is what I'm thinking, uh, with the image shown on the card. We got the devil. Remember, we got that with bloodline, abuse, neglect. And we got perversion with treason. So there's definitely a perversion uh, taking place within this family. So Micah and JP, right? And with the treason card, it's like someone is betraying someone. It's a huge level of betrayal when you see the treason card. All right, so we got wooded area with spouse, partner, and accident. So it's possible that um, maybe he's trying to make it look like an accident as well. Or I was thinking look like an accident, but really we know he was making it look like uh, she did this to herself, right? Why am I shuffling again? I don't know. Ugh. Yeah, we just got the life insurance card. Again, I don't know. I just wanted to shuffle that again. So take a look. Did Micah have life insurance that would benefit someone in the end? We got the market manipulation with J.E. and love. All right. So I think uh, J.P. <laughs> was a lot like J.E. in the sense that he would manipulate people into loving him. He would manipulate people into thinking he's for them and good for them, but it never was, right? So in the end, Micah was on her road to freedom and that was exposed through her getting, giving the divorce papers to him. Okay, we got the humanoid and serial killer and death. <sighs> Again, like I said about that humanoid card, Definitely could have been some kind of manipulation with the AI. We got rumors and accomplice slash partner in crime and communication along with predictive programming. A lot of what we talked about in the first reading had to do with the mind control. Uh, JP was not only mind controlling Micah herself. He was mind controlling the entire congregation through rumors about his wife. Because we also got the MK Ultra, which is mind control. It's like systematic uh, mind control. And the Antichrist card, which goes right along with the devil card we already received. So definitely a huge level of mind control taking place. I think it's on the mass scale because uh, just the mind control card is one thing that we got in the first reading. But in this reading, we got MK Ultra, which is a a larger scale mind control, right? So I think that's just pointing at mind control on the large scale, not only within JP's congregation, but now at this point with the entire uh, public who is watching what's going down, right? He's still trying to control the narrative. We got school, ancient mystery, and hidden. We got those cards after receiving a live. So we got the alive card, so something happened while Micah was alive regarding some kind of mystery, something hidden regarding the school. And then we got the card greed to explain that. All right. I'm convinced that Micah Miller did not do this to herself. And we finally got the life insurance card as I was doing this rundown. I don't even know why I started shuffling again. But I do believe that the death had a lot to do with money. It had a lot to do with keeping things hidden, ancient mystery. It had a lot to do with programming the minds of people and just evil in general. But yeah, I found it very interesting that we got these two cards. Well, we also got this card in the first reading. Oh, we also got this card in the first reading. That's just off the top of my head that I remember. All right. I am convinced that Micah Miller did not do this to herself. She's not the one fully responsible for her own death. I think that there's definitely a level of mind control taking place, not only to us, the people watching, uh, but also to the, the law enforcement who's 
following this case or trying to look at the case. And to the congregation, to the family, to the friends, to everyone. This is major predictive programming and mind control vibes coming from this entire situation. So continue to keep praying for Micah Miller's true friends and family. And be sure to send loving prayers to Micah Miller herself. And now it's time to send Micah Miller back to the energy from where she came. So, Micah Miller, thank you, thank you, thank you so much for being here and for telling us more of your story of what really happened to you. And now I will release your energy so that you can go back to the energy from where you came. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much for being here. I love you. Bye-bye.